is anyone here wondering? I wish I can just know what God is telling me at this hour. I wish I can just hear what God is saying at this hour. I wish I can just see in the spirit how to go about this issue. This is your channel. If you have not made my name, sir, Apostle Marvin Omede, a man sent by God to teach power to hear from God and to make the ministry of the Holy Spirit popular. And this is every encounter with Apostle Marvin and see us anointing. Guiding you on how to see in the spirit, how to have heavenly visitations and heavenly encounters, meeting the Holy Spirit, meeting Jesus Christ, and meeting God the Father, and heavenly host one on one to the glory of God. And your life shall not remain the same in the name of Jesus Christ. Have you on guard to have fellowship? Deeper fellowship. Someone said, The lies you read in the Bible, they become real to you. Yes, meeting these things in reality, meeting the stories you read in the Bible in reality to the glory of God. To the glory of God, to the glory of God in Jesus' name. Please, if you have not subscribed to this channel, subscribe and share and like the channel so that others can bless, can be blessed and benefit from it in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Can somebody shout overflowing anointing, overflowing anointing, excess anointing, abundant anointing. Let me hear you say that. Excess anointing, abundant anointing. Overflowing anointing, hallelujah. Overflowing anointing, surplus anointing that God has in his kingdom to release upon his children that desire to have fellowship with him, that desire to meet him one on one, that desire to see him in the spirit, that desire to hear from him. Excess anointing, abundant anointing, surplus anointing, overflowing anointing to the glory of God in the name of Jesus. Because he said, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. And your old men will dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. And this is the season of visions and encounter in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. In our prayer session today, we shall be reading from Numbers 11. Numbers 11. And you know the story. You can start from 16. Jesus God Almighty told um, Moses. Say, Moses, I'm going to take from your anointing and release it upon 17 elders that you will gather unto me. As Moses gathered, then God came in a pillar of cloud and released that anointing upon the 17 that we had gathered. But something happened. The man named Hedad and Medad were not part of the 70 that they didn't come out into the camp that Moses called, uh, gathered, where Moses gathered people. They didn't come out there. But when God released his excess anointing, that's what I'm going to, his overflowing anointing, his powerful anointing, his surplus anointing, part of them spread to the camp where Hedad and Medad were, you know, staying. Because they didn't come to where others were gathered with Moses. As Moses released the anointing upon them by blessing. By the grace of God. So the anointing touched them. I'm speaking to someone yesterday that wherever you are all over the world, by the power of the Holy Ghost and by the grace of God upon my life, the anointing will touch you. You shall be touched afresh in the name of Jesus Christ. So what happened? From 26, say, But there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of one was Hedad and the name of the other was Medad. And the Spirit rested upon them. And there were of them that were written, they went out not unto the tabernacle, and they prophesied in the camp. They were prophesying in the camp, and they were not with Moses. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is awesome. Overflowing. And there ran a young man, told Moses, and said, Hey, that and Meda do prophesy in the camp. But they were not here with us. He <laughs> said, And Joshua, the son of Nob, even Joshua, Moses' servant, closes. He said, The servant of Moses, one of his young men, answered and said, My Lord, forbid them. Rebuke those people because they didn't come and join us when you called us. And God is awesome. Faithful God. In verse 29, he said, And Moses said unto him, And yes, that for me, for my sake, would God that all the lost people were prophets. Moses, in his wisdom, not told Joshua, I said, Joshua, don't be envious. Relax. The desire of God is that all men become prophets. All the elders become prophets. Even those that are not here, those that are sleeping in the house. God desired them to become prophets. To be anointed. That's where the world is coming from. Overflowing anointing. Surplus anointing. Abundance. He said, he that is tasty. He that is hungry. He that desire. Come, come and fetch. Come and, come, come and take. From the well of the living water. Basoka ye buraga degede. Akosyo. From the fountain of life. Is your sakata? Is are you testing? Are you hungry? Do you want to see more of this God? 
Do you want to do you want to feel more of his presence, more of his power, and hear more of his voice? He said, Come. You may not be in America, you may not be in New York, but wherever you are, the anointing will drop on you. In the name of Jesus. So I'm going to say a simple prayer. He said, This is the confidence that we have in him. When we ask anything according to his will, he hear it us. Be confident of this very thing. The God that started a good work in your life, he will perfect it in the name of Jesus in your life and your family. So I will, we shall be praying. Say, Father, the anointing that you have released upon our flesh, give me my portion. My soul, Lord Jesus, the anointing that you poured out upon our flesh to see and to hear in the spirit, give me my portion in the name of Jesus. I crave for it. I desire it, oh Lord. He said, They that hunger and test after righteousness, they shall be filled. The anointing you have released upon our flesh, Father, give me my portion. I desire it. I remember he said, Whatsoever you desire, he said, When you pray, believe that you receive it, and you shall have it. I tap into the portion of this grace to see in the spirit, to hear in the spirit. Let my daily life become the life of a spiritual man. In the name of Jesus, let my lifestyle become the lifestyle of a spiritual woman. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I desire enough for ordinary life. Enough for ordinary life. Let your anointing rest upon me. Help me to prophesy. Come to your perfect way for my life in Jesus' name, Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, the anointing of God will rest with you, it will go with you, it will guide you, it will sustain you, it will open a new door for you and your family in the name of Jesus. It is well with you. Please continue to hunger and test after righteousness. There is more. <laughs> there is more. I'm still hungry. There is more. I know there is more. So that is why we are not tired. We are not weary. We are pushing for that. He said, I seek for, for it. I seek for the grace of God. I seek for the grace of complete grace of God upon my life. I desire it. I'm pushing for it. I'm pressing for it. For that mark of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm pressing for it. I say I press towards the mark. I press towards it. Whatever your mark is in Christ, press for it. Whatever you say, I press for it. He said, I wish that all prophesy. He said, that's God said that all prophesy. Get it. It's yours in Jesus' name. You are blessed. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. On today's tip, I want to share with us that it begins with desire and hunger. The Bible says, a day that hunger and taste after righteousness, they shall be filled. And Jesus said, blessed are your eyes for the sea and your ears for the year. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. So if you want to tap into that grace and blessing, desire it with the whole of your heart. I could remember a story of a man of God. He said when he gave his life to Christ and he was growing in Christ spiritually, what happened? He was in an, a, a meeting. And in that meeting, while he was standing there, the man of God said, Wait a minute, God just said something. God just spoke to me. God just revealed something to me. Why was there say you said what? God spoke to you. And I mean I didn't hear. Why didn't I hear? Lord speak to me too. Why didn't I hear? That's the kind of hunger that I'm talking about. You see, he began to question why would God speak to the pastor that was you know holding meetings with them and God did not speak to him. Why would the pastor alone hear and he didn't hear? So he began to query, he began to question, he began to inquire from God, Lord, why? Speak to me, so I want to hear. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is the purpose why this broadcast is coming to you. To teach you how to hear. Because if you don't learn how to hear, you may not, you know, quickly catch up without, uh, you know, with the wisdom and the grace and the knowledge to hear from God. Same, the same as seeing in the spirit. You are being taught here how to see this supernatural, which we call the seer's anointing. God will anoint you with the grace as you are being taught. But there is knowledge to walk in it. There is knowledge to be consistent in it. There is knowledge to understand what you are saying. And not to apply them to your life and the life of others. Today I want to speak on in the section of the tip to document what you hear and what you see. 
Ensure you document your encounters is very, very important. Ensure you do a lot of us have dreams, a lot of us see, a lot of us hear, but we don't take note of them, we don't write them down. We have no documentation of those things, and the Holy Spirit is not pleased with that because you will not be able to refer to them, you may not be able to use them. With time, you forget. God will forget this. But when you write them down, you are encouraging the Holy Spirit. You are telling the host of heaven to bring more revelations to you, to bring more encounters to you, to divinely guide you that you are, you know, serious with them, you cherish them, and you are carefully documenting them for generations to come. We all enjoy reading the Bible today because someone documented their story. The act of the apostles wrote what will happen in their days. Their encounters, their miracles, their signs and wonders, they wrote it down. That's what we are doing. You see these things I'm sharing with you? They are my stories. I'm documenting them now online. But I have them written in my notes. That's what God wants. He doesn't play with revelation. He doesn't play with encounters. No. They are very, very serious in the kingdom of God. That is why it takes time to choose those he blesses with his grace and anointing. So when you have the privilege of hearing from God, sit back and write them down. Give them a date. Give them a title and enjoy it. Enjoy fellowship. It's great fellowship with the Holy Spirit when you do those things. You are in fellowship. You are blessed in Jesus' name. So whatever you see from now on, whatever God revealed to you in a dream, in, 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 in visions, please take note and write them down. If you don't have a note, get a note and put a, a, a right, title that note, my visions and my revelations. Write, write it there, write it. Everyone will be happy with you. Master Jesus, we celebrate the Holy Spirit, we give God all the glory. He is faithful that call it us, so we do it. I'm sharing today's testimony, which I titled, Spread Out! Kareto Jagada Gotoba. Spread Out! It is well with you. That's why I titled it, Spread Out! It is well with you. Wonderful encounter that happened November 30th, 2020. November 30th, 2020. In this encounter, I asked the Holy Spirit to open my eyes to see the message that He wants me to share with you people today, to share with people of the world, to bless the brethren with, to open my ears to hear, to open my heart to perceive, to give me bodily feeling in the spirit. So I prayed all this prayer said, and I closed my eyes. And in this vision, I was in it and I saw a bird, a small bird like a dove, was flying was flying and the bed was holding on to someone so bed was flying in the sky when you are in a vision like that right you are the person that is being held on to something like that yeah if most times you see the holy spirit maybe put you on his back and you are in that vision you are the one put the person on his back you are the one that is i'm trying to explain something here yeah, yeah you are the one because you are the one in that vision so immediately that white bed little dove changed to a big ego very mighty ego I changed a big ego, he flung me on his back. Then I was now on the back of the ego. We were flying. As we were flying, he said, spread out! The Holy Spirit screamed it, said, spread out! So I spread out my hands and my leg on his back. And we were going on a high speed. As we were flying, he now asked me, do you want to see Jesus? I said, yes. Do you want to go to heaven? I said, yes. So we began to go to heaven. As we got to heaven, this experience was different. Um, this experience was different. And I'll show, let me show you a drawing there that, uh, you know, signify what I mean by when it says spread out. I see something similar to what, I, uh, what happened in that particular encounter. So as we got to heaven, the Holy Spirit stood. And this particular image will show something similar to that. The Holy Spirit stood and said, I should turn slowly. But before he said that, I went closer to him because... I have not experienced such thing before. When I went, when it, uh, it stood, there was so much light coming from behind me. So I went closer to him and heard him. I could feel the hair on his, you know, an ego, right? Big ego. The hair on his uh, stomach area. Then the, 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 like kind of the, the shoulder bones. I could, when I uh, embraced him, I could feel the shoulder bone. I can still feel it now. I feel, feel the shoulder bone. And the air was so soft, if it was strong, but it was, it was soft and strong, you know, it was stiff, but very tender, you know, the air on the, on the tummy area. I just enjoyed that fellowship. I stayed there. And I said, uh, turn slowly. When he said turn slowly, and I looked, 
halfway behind me. There was so much light coming from behind me. And I knew from experience and little knowledge that that light was coming from the throne room. Because in heaven, there's so much light in it. It's coming from the Father. So much light. That's why he's called his, call him light. So much light. So the way Holy Spirit dropped me, taking me straight to the throne room, which doesn't happen every time. You don't see yourself going to that throne room every time, except you are, you know, uh, summoned or you are called or you are invited, you know, in heaven. So as he dropped me on the tro at the throne room, he was still standing there. He said, turn slowly. He didn't want me to turn sharply because I didn't know where I was. Turn so that the light will not affect my eyes. He said, turn slowly. I call what a loving father. What a loving father. Taking care of his own. He said, turn slowly. Turn slowly. So I began to turn. I began to turn. I began to turn. And my eyes was able to see the throne room. And there was so much light there. So I was walking towards the throne. Then the Holy Spirit left. I was walking towards the throne room now. Then the God the Father said, I should come. I was walking towards the throne. I was not asking myself as I was going there. I said, where, where is Jesus? Because most times it's Jesus that always guide me in that kind of uh, uh, environment. Because he will tell you what to do. You can ask him questions. You can't just be walking alone in the throne room. I say, ah, where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? So I was walking, walking gradually. God the Father said, come. I was looking at him. I was walking towards him. So when I got close to him enough, he said, kneel down. Kneel down. So as I was to kneel down, I couldn't kneel down. Just fell, fell, uh, face flat on the floor. So I was lying there. Then I could perceive that uh, ends. It, it was more than the hand of the father. Maybe some angels joined him. Like four or, or, or five hands. They were holding anointing oil. They were pouring the anointing oil on me while I lay there on the floor. They were pouring the oil on me. And it's like they emptied all the bottles. All of them. Empty all the bottles. Because the oil was coming from different directions. That, that I knew that it was more than one. So they emptied all the bottles on me to the glory of God. To the glory of God, as they entered the bottle, I was soaked there. He now said, Stand up. So I now stood as I stood up. I was just saying, ah, What happened? Here is Jesus. As I look at my right hand, Jesus was standing there. Jesus now said, Come. And I said, ah, Come like this. I'm soaked. He said, Don't worry, come. So I walked towards Jesus. <laughs> Very beautiful. Father, I give you all the glory. So as I walked towards Jesus in this encounter, uh, let me show you an image of Jesus and I in the stand there as I went to embrace him. In that sense, I should embrace him. People, as I embraced Jesus in that encounter, all the anointing on here dried. Wow! Everything dried. So when I in that said good, so he said, do you, said, do you want to speak with me? I said, yes. So let us go. So we now began to walk away from the throne room, walking towards, maybe towards the garden where we usually talk. As I was going, I looked back to say hello to God the Father to just thank him for what he has done for me on that particular day. And I said, it is well with you. And then I lifted up my hand and just gave him glory and praise. As I was praising him, he said, I love you. And I said, I love you too, Father. I was not going to move away with Jesus. It was a glorious time. It was a glorious encounter in the presence of God. I give God all the glory for the grace, for the humility, for the favor, for everything he found in me to anoint me on that particular day and I give God all the glory. So I went with Jesus Christ and we began to chat, began to ask him questions. Then I began to tell Jesus, I said, Jesus, why is everything so calm, so successful, so peaceful, so so, so blessed? I'm just telling him about, you know, just sharing testimony and telling him how, you know, loving he is, how faithful he is, how everything is moving according to his perfect way. He said, Marvin, all these things you are experiencing and talking about, they are my peace. They are my peace. I want to let you know today that whatever you are going through, God has given you his peace. He said, my peace I live with you, not as the world give it. God has given you his peace. And remember what he says to one, he says to all. That same anointing poured on me, I release that same grace upon you through this uh, uh, broadcast in the name of Jesus Christ. That anointing is to bless my kind. It's to bless the people of the world. It's to bless you and your family. I release that anointing in the name of Jesus Christ. I release that anointing in the name of... I release the grace I carry upon you to see in the Spirit, to hear God clearly, to have divine directions in the name of Jesus Christ. The same peace I experienced in my life and family, in my heavenly encounters that make me share them with joy and gladness. Receive that same grace in the name of Jesus. 
in Jesus' wonderful name that we are afraid. What a time with God. What a time with Jesus Christ. I give God all the glory. You shall be blessed in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for too much, so much for sharing the platform with me today. Please invite someone next time. Share this broadcast with them. It shall be a new day for you in Jesus' name. Saying in the spirit, <laughs> meeting Jesus one on one. Let me just share this as I close. Before now, I used to teach people how to hear from God. That means the Holy Spirit taught me and guided me. So he began to speak to me, you know, by hearing and I respond and ask. But recently, he blessed me beyond that and made my eyes to be open so I will see. I've never seen or met the Holy Spirit before all my life since he called me to ministry. So it's a privilege I'm inviting you into. The person that has been speaking to me, now I now saw him. It's a different experience, people. That's what I'm trying to paint for you. The person that I've been... It's like you talking to someone on the phone in another country, in another state, far from where you are. You have been talking on phone and you have a fellowship with this person. You met somebody online, you're always chatting. You have never met the person. You're always talking on the phone. Then you now book an appointment to meet in person. And it's a person you love. How will you feel? That's what I'm talking about. So when you see me being excited, it's how I, how I feel. Because when I share this testimony, I remember them afresh. As if it's just now. It's an experience I would like you to come into. Please. I will, it's an experience I would like you to have. <laughs> there is nothing compared to meeting Jesus one-on-one. -on -one. There is nothing compared to it. Meeting God the Father... Seeing those 24 elders in heaven, meeting the angels of God, the glory, the beauty of heaven. That's why I say, separate yourself from among them in this season. Lord, say, hey, Lord, separate me. Give me my own encounter. Give me an heavenly vision that will last with me forever. He bobasaka, Lord, separate me. Nothing is worth it on earth. Why we pray that God's kingdom will come on earth? That will pray that people will be healed. Why we pray that people will have encounters. People will be blessed financially. People will live a fulfilled life. But there is something more than everything on here on earth. It's having fellowship with your father. It's knowing who have who created you. It's knowing the purpose why you came here on earth and fulfilling that purpose. That's why God the Father told me, say, Marvin, as you share this encounter, you are sharing my heartbeat of love. There's nothing else that's in this encounter apart from God trying to reach out to you with the whole of his heart, with his full capacity of his love. He said, my heartbeat of love. My heartbeat of love for them. Just to show that he loves you. He said, go and tell them that I love them. I love them. I love them. He loves you, people. God loves you. And he cares for you. Please desire to meet him. Study his word. And keep them in your heart. It's a new day for you. It's a new day for you. It's a new day for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Come and have fellowship with God. Through this broadcast and you shall be blessed. Please if you have any question. If you have any comment. If there's anything you want to know as I share this broadcast, if there's any area that is not clear, please leave them in the comment section below and shall be addressed in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you and bless you richly. Don't forget to subscribe and share with others. Have a great day. We shall see you in the next broadcast in Jesus' name. Amen. My name is Sege Apostle Marvin Omede, a man sent by God to teach power to hear from God and to make the ministry of this popular. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. See us anointing and heavenly encounters to the glory of God. Amen.